at improving the health of the people of the area. Rafi Hamid, TVC News, Iloba, Ocean State. And here in Lagos State, the Deputy Governor, State uh, Obafemi Hamzat, rather, has pledged to support Islamic finance policies in the state, giving halal businesses a significant boost. The Deputy Governor was represented by the Special Advisor to the Governor on Taxation and Revenue, Abdul Kabir Bayemi, at an event in Lagos. And we'll have details in this report, and then we'll return with business updates. Stay with us. One of the key objectives of Islamic finance is wealth generation from legitimate trade and ethical financing alternatives to promote economic growth. West, Allah. At the third edition of the Business the Way Allah Wants It conference, the spotlight is on enhancing legal businesses according to the tenets of Islam. Allah wealth is not just about avoiding interest and haram activities. It is about creating a financial ecosystem that encourages ethical business practices and social responsibility. Participants were encouraged to explore halal investments to scale up their businesses for wealth accumulation. You know, you cannot just um, make money, you have to learn to invest money. So they are investing in halal uh, uh, opportunities that, you know, they have very low risks. There are risks that they can actually, you know, foresee if at all is going to come. And also they have the opportunity to also learn practical ways how people have done businesses over the years. Sometimes you're making money and you feel that, oh, I'm making a lot of money. You may be doing it the wrong way. Allah may be testing you by giving you more, making your business bloom, but you're not getting any reward for it. You're not having any blessing in what you're doing. The Lagos state government assured of its support for Islamic enterprises while encouraging participants to leverage their acquired insights for growth. I encourage all participants here today to approach this conference with an open mind and a heart ready to embrace change, learn from the distinguished speakers, engage in discussions and share your experiences. Together we can build a robust business community that serves both the dunya and our hardware. Let us commit to leading businesses that prioritize humanity over exploitation. With many business owners striving to meet up with the current economic realities, this event aims to foster growth and sustainable businesses for Muslims while adhering to Islamic teachings. Zainab Akonde. Well, in business news, Nigeria and India have reaffirmed their commitment to a strategic partnership pledging to strengthen ties in key areas including economic development, defense, health care, and food security. The Secretary of Economic Relations of India says the plan is also to enhance capacity building under the education exchange programs, especially digital economy. India's High Commissioner to Nigeria also shows that the Indian community in Nigeria will continue to contribute to Nigeria's development in trade, health, and employment. The development issues, we talked about uh, the uh, uh, sharing of experiences between the two countries. Uh, then also through the Voice of the Global South, you know, Nigeria has actively participated in the Voice of the Global South Summit that Indian, India has organized and Prime Minister leadership took the lead in that. Uh, Nigeria has been continuously with us on that front. Uh, and also in the context of Global South itself, you know, there is a need for sharing of experiences. Some of the local solutions that India has developed are very effectively implemented in our own country, can be customized to the countries in the global south. And Nigeria can play a, a catalyst role and also a partnership role on that front. There are new areas that are being identified, which, is, which include, uh, as we discussed, the agriculture part of it, particularly uh, say lentils and other things which are being considered as a, as a possibility. Then uh, irrigation services, seed, hybrid seed development, research and development on good seeds, uh, uh, climate uh, resistant seeds and other things are being considered so that uh, this, that area can also come into focus between the two countries. The African Union has launched the African Disaster Risk Management and Recovery Platform under the theme Enhancing Africa's Capacity in Disaster Risk Management and Recovery at the ongoing 2024 United Nations Climate Change Conference in Baku, Azerbaijan. Now the initiative is set to transform how Africa tackles disaster, risk reduction, management and recovery by introducing innovative and practical solutions to the continent's growing climate challenges. 
would also uh, support AU member states in building resilience through enhanced policies and uh, institutional frameworks and strategic action plans. Director of Sustainable Development and Blue Economy at the African Union Commission, Mr. Hansen Mwambai, highlighted the importance of youth involvement in disaster risk management and noted the need for a stronger coordinated effort to best, better prepare and respond to disasters across member states. Well, global stocks began the week on a firmer footing ahead of a highly anticipated earnings release from VDA, while in Japan, comments from a central bank's heads are left markets on the country's rate outlook. Despite a weaker year, Japan's Nikkei fell 1.16%, dragged by a technological share decline. Now, MSCI's broadest index of Asian Pacific shares outside of Japan advanced 0.1%, Nasdaq features gained 0.7%, while S&P 500 features edged up 0.27% ahead of VDS' third quarter results. Shares of VDI are up nearly 200% this year, with the, its hefty weighting in the S&P 500 partially responsible for the index's charge to record high this year. Eurostock 50 features added 0.12%, FTSE features tacked on 0.14%, China CSR 300 Blue Chip Index paired earlier gains to last trade 0.3% lower. The Shanghai Composite Index is 0.03%, Hong Kong Hang Seng index rose 0.65 percent. Spirit Airlines have filed for bankruptcy protection after the pioneer of non frills air travel in the U.S. struggled with a long run of quarterly losses and significant debt. The airline's woes dipped after the collapse of its $3.8 billion planned merger with JetBlue Airways in January and also struggled to capitalize on the recovery from the pandemic because of an intense competition, engine problems that have gone grounded or that have grounded some of its planes and other factors. Now, the company filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in New York and announced an agreement with bondholders to restructure its debt and raise monies to help it operate during the bankruptcy process, which is expected to exit in the first quarter of next year. Spirit began operations as a trucking company operating under a different name in 1964, it later became a tour operator and started offering flights in 1990. Two years later, it became Spirit Airline. In a significant move to improve investments, Taiwan's president, Li ching Ti, is calling on, its European, on the European Union to forge a bold economic partnership agreement aimed at enhancing collaboration in semiconductors, emphasizing our data until democracy is crucial to a counter-rising authoritarianism and to build resilient global supply chains. Taiwan has pushed for the signing of investment and trade deals with European Union in what will be politically significant for the country, given its diplomatic isolation and general exclusion from most global bodies and agreements. For its part, the EU has been counting uh, Taiwan as a like-minded partner under the European Chiefs Act to encourage more semiconductor production in Europe and less independence on Asia despite the lack of formal ties with the Chinese claimed the island. Speaking at Taiwan's EU Investment Forum in Taipei, Mr. Lai says they are facing the threat of expanding authoritarianism. Taiwan and EU must form a strong democratic umbrella and build secure supply chains for global democracy.